drilling equipment that's used in the manufacture of ceramic lamp bases and uh, decanters used for uh, bourbon. We're going to be showing you the uh, machinery in part used for manufacturing these type of items using the slip casting process. These are ceramic lamp bases. These are decanters. In this case, uh, they're Corvette automobile decanters. plant, but it will be closed down very shortly. The purpose of this film is to acquaint you with certain selected pieces of machinery and equipment that are used in the process. This machinery is uh, going to be illustrated first by the slip casting lines. The slip casting lines are right in front of you right now. There are 72 of these lines that were engineered and manufactured by or for the Regal China Corporation themselves. Casting lines are used for forming the shapes which were in the initial part of this film. Slip casting is a process by which molds, such as those in the middle of the screen at the moment, are filled full of a slip. The ceramic slip is inside of these closed molds at this time. We're going to show you how the machines function. Transforming that slip, the product that you see right here is being removed from molds, will become the cast part. Molds, of course, are made to suit the size and the shape of the part that you uh, want to cast.
travels to the next mold. Goes down in position. Again, that filling will take place until the liquid comes up and makes contact with the probe, and so the cycle will continue again.
see the airbag arrangement and how the bags are strapped up against the uh, one portion of the frame. You can also see this sensor which determines the point at which the filler neck stops penetrating down into the mold. The uh, canvas uh, or rubber type of conveyor along the bottom is very visible here. It runs from the extreme outside all the way across to the opposite side. It's serving two sides of the line. the belt, slightly radius to keep the material in the center. This is the valve which stops and starts the flow of the slip when the probe indicates that it's full or it's ready for filling. It starts the flow. I was just pointing out that uh, this is also the switch that once it hits the mold and moves up electronically causes uh, the flow of the slip uh, by opening up the valve up here that we were talking about a moment ago. The next uh, item to be filmed is how these molds are dumped. In other words, how the excess of slip in the center of the mold is discharged from these molds. Now the timer that you see operating on this particular line several minutes. What will happen is that when the timer hits zero, the automatic cycle will cause the line or the lines to tip upside down. And when that happens, the fluid that's in the center of the molds is going to be discharged onto the belt right down here on the bottom of the uh, assembly, it's going to discharge onto the belt, and the belt is going to automatically start carrying that slip to the far end of the machine, where it will be uh, discharged down into the grate and pumped back into the system. Now here we're looking at a mold on that line, and you can see how much of the liquid has been absorbed. The amount of uh, liquid absorbed, of course, how long this mold sits here determines how thick the wall thickness will be on the part that's been slip cast. This is a very old, very well established ceramic process. I'd like to point out that these machines are extremely automated for this industry. Slip casting is still commonly a manually performed task in many of the potteries and ceramic manufacturing facilities not only in the United States, but elsewhere around the world. These are very automated machines, and they're very well engineered. The timer should be coming down to zero, and when it hits zero, you notice that the line turns. There we go. Now it'll tilt towards the inside. The reason it tilts gradually is so that the volume of liquid being discharged on the belt is maintained at a controllable rate. If they simply dumped it upside down, they might put too much slip, which might flood the conveyor belt or jam up some of the machinery. So it's indexed progressively when it's in the automatic cycle for control of the amount of discharge onto the belt. We're looking down the end. Well, from the end, now the course is moving at this point.
nacelle is actually rotated 180 degrees, where these molds will be drained. It's a good opportunity once again to look at the airbags that are expanded, keeping the molds together and keeping them in the racks. being taken out of the molds on this line. Finishing taking place and the holes being put in the bottom of the uh, bases. Yeah, the plant. Or at the tops, actually.
many scales and other equipment used in batching material. This is a wet process. There are, of course, ball mills, many, many diaphragm or other types of pumps. There are wooden storage tanks with agitators, many agitators and agitator drives. Lots of tanks with agitators. These are very, very large tanks. Wash stations, fiber drums, many more tanks. Wood, steel, stainless steel, containers, pumps. In large quantities, just about anything you would use in a wet flip process. You get the agitator in one of the tanks. Dust collectors of various sizes. Any more of these uh, pallet jacks and forklift trucks, tanks, general machinery and equipment. Agitators of all types and sizes and horsepower. Agitator in front of you with a little propeller at the bottom of the shaft. A lot of stainless steel. Oh, the 
this equipment. It's as fine as they come. Of course, there's quite a bit of duct work for the dust collectors and other apparatus to operate these systems. Many of these agitators that are on portable stands a totally separate piece of equipment with its own very long conveyor and its uh, uh, finishing stations, I'm told. Some more of the dust collectors are on the large one. Here we have one of the tunnel kilns. This tunnel kiln is actually bricked in place. There you see a car that's just been placed inside. Put the pusher mechanism at the end.
2,000 degree Fahrenheit ceram kiln. It's a periodic kiln, electrically operated. This is a Franklin roll leaf hot stamping machine. This is the uh, leaf itself wound through the machine. This is a long built conveyor. that was used to break up product. Company pickup truck will be part of the liquidation. The tractor with snowplow blade for bucket loader, etc. Lots of raw stock of material. Very good values here in over-the-road equipment and other types of machinery and equipment. The grass cutter on the back of this one. The building, which is the maintenance shop, and it has a full complement of maintenance tools, many spare parts. These are reportedly all spare backup diaphragm pumps.
this uh, bench lathe. Interesting shelving out by the shipping dock. Jim Stanley, Jim Stanley, Portable shop offices of various sizes. Bell sander, a couple of industrial vacuum cleaners, and they're throughout the building. As a current dust collector that's attached directly to it, they may be sold together or separately. Here's some outstanding implant office. There are four offices uh, joined together. This will be sold as one lot. Furniture. Support and other dust collectors that will be sold separately. There's a lot of cafeteria equipment that's going to be sold tables, chairs. Some of this equipment is leased. Table, chairs, and most of the other stuff, however, will be sold. So notice throughout the generally very good condition of this building. It's reflected in the maintenance of the equipment, which is above average. Review of the offices. Uh, there's a question as to what extent furniture will be sold for the offices. Uh, you can check with us prior to an auction date and we can let you know. The extent that it is uh, put up for sale, office machinery and equipment uh, is in excellent condition. Once again, we don't know to what extent any of this furniture will be sold as opposed to being transferred within the corporate. This is an outside view from the... The building you see right here is an independent building separate from the other. And that's where the maintenance uh, shop is located. Thank you for uh, reviewing this video. Please contact us for any questions that you may have. Four uh, Corporation will be conducting this auction and liquidation during the summer of 1992. The manufacturing operations of the Regal China Corporation offers many opportunities for buyers of the types of machinery and equipment illustrated on this tape to be able to uh, upgrade your plants or expand your plants with more modern equipment. This is truly an opportunity. This equipment is way above average. Contact Moore, M-O-H-R, Corporation, at telephone 313-846-3000 or fax 846-3766 or by mail to Post Office Box 1148, Dearborn, Michigan, 48121, in the United States. This will end this presentation.